Hey there YouTube, this is Wheelchair21 and this is either a rolling review or a featured video on Hirotaku's official YouTube channel. Anyways, this is Wizard Action Please 01, an old figure that actually I didn't recently get. I got it around Christmas time and I just never got around to reviewing it. I just kind of just kept it around as a display figure, as just a basic toy and just kind of just screwed around with it till, you know things came up, I put it away, and I recently found it in storage. Anyways, the box art is actually really nice. It was a really cool toy series, but it didn't really catch on due to all the wizard styles, like its other dragon forms and his other element forms. The box art, though, I think was just really incredible. It was nice for a basic figure, and it was quite small. It was a lot smaller than the recent figures that had came out for O's and or Double. It was almost similar to the basic... Uh, Final Form Ride series that was released in tw 2009 to 20 2010. Web01, Common Rider, Wizard, Flame Style. First off, looks a lot better than his figure art form. It is usually the one thing that is praised about the basic series line because the abs aren't so crunched down, the actual trench coat isn't so f far out and warped out, but Overall, the joint system isn't that overall great. It is using the basic uh, toy line mold, which has pin joints and has a similar body structure either to, say, a Mattel Masters of the Universe figure, a DC's Classics figure, or even basic Japan style like the previous O's series and or Wizard series or even currently now, the Arms Change series. The one cool aspect of why I say it's more like a Mattel joint is its actual hip joints are very similar and reminiscent to the Mattel joints, where the rest of the body mold is structured on the basic Sokachu Henshin uh, retail release figures of how their joints work and are applied. He actually has his ring all painted in red for the flame style, and his basic ring for belt connect is just a silver ring in an indent, meaning it can be any ring off of his holster. The belt does not switch around like it can on the figure art. It can't rotate, it can't turn. It's just one stagnant piece. The chest plate is a little bit better, and it has a nice gloss plastic with paint inside to help illuminate it to make it look amber and ruby red. It's great. It's one of the best aspects of the figure. One of the cool things that all WAPs have is a special button on their chest that allows their heads to light up. Yeah, it's actually a cool feature that lights up. And even though there's electronics built into the chest, the waist is still rotatable. It still allows to spin, and so does the head. The head still has free reign and access. So depending on which way you want to angle it, his head still lights up, and it looks amazing. I like it. It's great, and it's a handy little flashlight when you need to uh, find stuff in the dark. Anyways, his accessory count is minimal, because all he has is the freaking wizard gun in both its forms. An actual gun form, saber form, and the gun comes with automatic open hand, Unlike the figure art, yet again, it doesn't close. It is one hard piece, so all he can do is shake hands and then slash with the closed effect. Honestly, I don't know which one I like better to display with. I think it's probably the gun, just because the sword doesn't have the red highlight painted into it. And now we come to evaluation time, because I am just that kind of sort of a reviewer. Anyways, the wizard WAP looks better than the figure art. Its accessory count is very minimal, and it doesn't have the full hand-opening gimmick that the figure art holds. Along with that, the rings aren't as well detailed, they're just basic plastic molding, and doesn't look that great, but it's smaller and more, I would say, minute than how oversized they are on the figure art, yet again. A lot of the pros to this are completely the con I would say the cons against the figure art. However, I do like that it is very slim and refined. It uses the basic body mold that has become 
for becoming for the newest style of Sokachu Henshin, or what you would say the evolution of Sokachu Henshin's for Bandai products for Kamen Rider. I honestly like it. I'm really loving the figure overall. It's a nice basic figure. It's really cheap because Wizard's over. It wasn't that popular, and neither was its toy line. You can get these figures for like 1,000 yen on clearance from some stores, and from several middlemen, it'll be very cheap to get. The light-up feature in its head is probably a really nice aspect and gimmick for the toy. I would have liked if maybe more things were made for each of the rider and its forms, maybe like, you know, certain activation uh, rings, and I think that's what hurt the line, really, was they tried to really keep it minimal compared to what they did with all the other rider series in the past, and it hurt them. And I can see why now the current series, Gaim, is doing way better. Honestly, Wizard will always be one of my favorites by design alone and for some of the ideas that it can do. Just overall, the trench coat makes him bitchin'. It's great. It's the aspect, and the red and black just works magnificently. It's really the theme and design that really helps put over this figure and toy. And it also saves you a buck if you don't want to buy the figure art. Anyways, I'm Wheelchair21. You can find me here on YouTube and on Herotaku.com. You can follow me on Twitter, and you can check me out at Taja underscore Doyle on Instagram. Check out all the podcasts associated with Raijo Nihon, which is our podcasting station, our pod, our official radio station for Herotaku.com. Like Herotaku.com on Facebook. Follow Herotaku.com. And just check out the amazing articles we have, because we are with heroes, and this has been... A rolling review or Hirotaku exclusive review from Wheelchair 21.